And now, a special presentation. Brought to you by Card Lab. So Thursday, we had the main stage at the National. Ivan and Rob and the guys with uh, Go GTS, they were kind enough to give us a little time slot. We really wanted to talk with people and engage, not just the people at the National, but people who couldn't make the National. So we decided to do a crossover live. Besides doing Card Ladder, which is a data tracking platform, we also do a show every Friday night on Instagram Live called The Crossover. And we are now bringing that show to the national. We took questions from the audience, which was fun. And we had a big crowd, I thought. A lot of people circled around, people supporting the show. We had some great people show up, like people who are usually in the chat. I see Card Killer, Peter Pac-Man. I see Dormant Stash. Dormant Stash is in the building. The stash is no longer dormant. It was a lot of fun. Dormant Stash, our great old friend Kyle. He got back involved in the hobby about a year ago and he started going through his old collection. He came across tons of Kobe rookies that he had, dozens and dozens of Kobe rookies. We went through them and definitely decided tons of the stuff is gradable. So we put together a group submission uh, to PSA. First step into the hobby again. And now we're just patiently waiting for our PSA bulk submission to come back home. One of the goals that we had going into this show was get cards graded by PSA. In particular, Stiff came into some nice cards. All right, so we're logged in. We're submitting two cards for Stiff Arm Wax, Bowl Bowl Prism Gold, Justin Jefferson Prism Rookie Signature. Banged out an order form and then dropped them off to get graded, and they'll be graded by the end of the show. If this was two or three years ago, I'd say both cards have a shot at getting a 10, and at worst, like a nine. But <laughs> grading seems to be a little stricter these days, a little more particular, and so yeah. we'll see what grades those get. So Thursday night, we were invited to an exclusive party at the Capitol Grill, hosted by Ken Golden and Golden Auctions. The tease was that he's gonna announce something big, and when we got there, it was, it was cocktails, people mingling, a lot of big names in the hobby, it was, it was a lot of fun. Here we have beautiful bottles of wine, all of which will be consumed by Chris, because he's an alcoholic. So. so we've been friends with Adam Lefko for a while, and then we saw him at the dinner, and he was really excited to come show Chris and I and some of the other collectors around us what he had gotten at the show. Because he's been dabbling for a while, but he hadn't quite picked up that big grail PC card yet. All right, do you want to take a guess? I'm really proud of him. We had no idea what to expect. His, he collects a wide range of stuff. We had no idea what it's going to be. I'll show you two at the same time. Get their reaction. Oh, oh yes. yes. Dude, oh my gosh. Gotcha. Gotcha. Congrats. Look at his eyes. So he ended up picking up a 2003 uh, limited logos exquisite Dwayne Wade PSA 7, which is a you know it's a monster card. That's actually a game used jersey from his rookie year. And he did the whole consolidation thing, which is something we talked about a lot. And uh, he sold a lot of stuff to get to it. And he worked with Mike Hans on the deal, who's one of the best in the biz. So he was really excited about that. That's a monster card one to be very proud of. I did want to make an announcement. Ken broke some news, which was very exciting. We have a contract for a show called The Golden Touch, and... His new show, a reality show, about his auction house and about the hobby and about him, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I think he said Peyton Manning is executive producer. I think I heard Ken say it's gonna be similar to Selling Sunset on Netflix, what that did for real estate. So kind of get some, you know, interesting characters and bring a different angle to the hobby. It's going to be something we hope appeals 
to tens if not hundreds of millions of people. And um, I hope I'm doing it till I'm 70 years old. So on that note, cheers to everybody. So Thursday night was crazy. We had a lot of things going on, and Chris, Josh, and I actually had to split up to cover them all. I had to depart with Nick and Kyle. We ended up going downtown to Chicago. We were partnered on an event with Collectible, DraftKings, PWCC, Bullpen LA, just to name a few. I saw Mike and Jesse from Sports Card Nonsense podcast on the Ringer Network. Yeah, Mike and Jesse with Sports Cards Nonsense have one of the most important shows in the entire hobby. They're huge personalities. It's a lot of fun to be around them. They definitely bring a new, a fresh energy to the hobby scene, but they're also really sharp guys, and Mike is extremely knowledgeable about cards in general, about the industry. We had a great time, a lot of laughs. It was really fun. <laughs> Thursday night, there were two trade nights. One was put on by Jimmy, Kentucky Basketball Cards, and Ryan, Card Collector 2. Yeah, I made the trip over to the, the trade night and hung out in the lobby. You just found a lot of great collectors hanging out in the lobby between the shows. And it looked like the Card Collector 2 show was massive. An insane amount of people. I, I was at the one of his earlier ones in 2018. And so to go from where he was then to where he is now, it's, it's just impressive. It's really unbelievable. And the second trade night was also at the same venue. It was hosted by Joe, and it featured Project 70 artists, who also, many of them, worked on Top Project 2020, including Blake Jameson. Blake is near and dear to my heart because he was actually the inspiration for Christina's Corner. So it was really great to meet Blake in person because I had talked to him on Zoom and interviewed him, but I had never met him in person. So another instance of why the National is so important to attend because it's like all of these connections you make throughout the year, like crystallize and become fully formed friendships in person at the National. We all hung out, talked. It was a good time. So on Friday, we joined Collectible for a really fun panel. On the way walking back, we encountered G, also known as The Lucky Show. And then we ended up going through his entire collection that he had brought with him. And he's got a lot of good stuff. <laughs>